Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is an honor and be joy to be here in Sacramento at the Eternal Life Church today with Pastor and everyone. Bless you. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are already mothers and who have children and grandchildren and maybe great grandchildren or in the future. I um since the Holy Spirit is moving and I want to invite you just to stand for a moment There's a song I like to sing although I'm not a singer and it simply goes like this welcome holy spirit Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of us. So just, I, you guys are good. It's okay. No, it's okay. You're good. Thanks. Uh, in a few minutes. But um, I want you just to, I invite you today just to lift your hands. And just say these words with me. Welcome. Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. One more time. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place today. God, we glorify you and we praise your holy name. Just begin to worship Him right where you are. Begin to praise Him. Praise you, O oh God. God, we glorify you. We thank you for your love that endureth forever, your everlasting, never-ending, ever-present love. God, we thank you for the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. The grace that you sent Jesus in this world. And we worship you today. And God, we thank you for the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! 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 To God be glory and honor and praise and victory. We proclaim today that God is glorious in all the earth. We proclaim victory today. We worship you, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 One more time, just give Him praise all over this sanctuary. We praise you, O oh God. We glorify you. We glorify you. The praises go up and your glory comes down. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Now lift your hands toward heaven. Father, we pray in this place. We pray, God, that you would break our, our hard shell, break the outward, break the outward, that the inward would be stirred with fire. I pray, God, fire from heaven today. God, we pray fire from heaven today. God, that you would give us purpose and direction and resurrection and anointing, healing and eternal presence of your glory. God, let your glory come. Father, we pray for healing and miracles and salvation. And, and God, I just pray today that you would stir up your fire within us. Father, we praise you, we glorify you, and we lift you up. And we proclaim your glory in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, His anointing, and the power of your Holy Spirit. We proclaim victory, victory, victory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to read in Revelation chapter 2, if you have your Bible with you whether on screen or in paper. I like paper myself, but I'm old school, I suppose. 
Uh, Revelation chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. The title of this message is simply this, Keep the Fire Burning, or uh, perhaps it's a better way to say it is, Keep Your Fire Burning. The Bible says, in reading from the King James Version, chapter 2, verse 1 and following, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, verse 1, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the middle of the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. In verse 5, Remember therefore from where thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Looking in Acts chapter 19, verse 1, the Bible says this, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that thou shalt believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of the way before the multitude, he departed them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out from them. Father, we thank you for your word, and we pray your blessings upon it today. I want to share with you just for a few moments about this church in Ephesus and about this thought to keep the fire burning, keep your fire burning, keep your lamp lit. In this passage of Scripture, when God is speaking to John the Revelator and he is on the Isle of Patmos, he's been banished there. After being martyred, he had been burned in oil and left out on the ground and he lived after being boiled in oil. And he was banished. He was sent away to Patmos. And God would speak to him there and give him revelation. And that is where the book of Revelation was written as the Holy Spirit unctioned John the Revelator to write what he saw. 
And in this passage, we know this uh, series of verses. He's speaking about the churches in Asia and the challenges there, these seven churches that are in Asia. But he refers in chapter 2 to the church at Ephesus in the beginning of chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. And he speaks to them and he says, I, to the church at Ephesus, I want to share with you, you've got this right and you've got that right and you've done this well and you've done this well and you're doing this right. But this one thing I have against you, you have left your first love. Now, in the context of all of that, Paul the Apostle would take a, a journey in his missionary journeys to the city of Ephesus. He was traveling with this group of people. He left them to go some, to another place. He comes to Ephesus, and we find this in Acts chapter 19. He had just left Mars Hill in Athens a, f a few days before this where he had <clears throat> debated and argued and philosophize with the Stoics and the philosophers at Mars Hill on the Areopagus. And he was there, and it is there in Athens where he had spoken to them. And they have gods to everything, everything you could imagine. They had created a god for and an idol. And they finally created one that said to the unknown god. And Paul, being filled with the Holy Spirit, walked in, looked at all the gods there, and he saw this one that was to the unknown god. And he said, I want to talk to you about that God. He is the real God because you don't know Him and I do. And he preached there and he spoke there and then he would go on and he would travel to Corinth eventually. He would travel to Ephesus and he would travel this way through Asia Minor and he comes to Ephesus and he meets these 12 men there that are already worshiping God and they've been baptized in John the Baptist baptism where they have been baptized in water in the conversion experience of following the baptism of John. And Paul the Apostle asked them, have you been baptized with, have you received the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? They said, we've not even so much as heard of the Holy Spirit. And he says to them, what baptism were you, were you baptized unto? And they said, the baptism of John. And he said, John brought the baptism of repentance, but I bring to you the word of the living God, the Alpha and the Omega, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus Christ. And they were baptized in the name and under the grace of Jesus Christ. And they were born again for real, for sure, finally. And then he laid hands on them. And they all began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave utterance and came into their life. And revival breaks out. And Paul the Apostle did what he always seems to do in his process of going city to city when he would travel on the Via Apanatia that was that Roman road and he would go from place to place to place. We saw him go to Ephesus and Corinth. He would mind his way to, to Philippi and to Thessalonica and he would go and he would teach the Word and he would go to the synagogue and he would spend time there until they kicked him out and he would go find somewhere else. And that's exactly what he did in Ephesus. And for three months he went and he, he taught and he spoke at the synagogue until they got angry and mad and they were, they were agitated and they said, uh, we don't want to hear this anymore. And, and they began to start a stir in that moment. And so he left. He went over to the school of Tyrannus. He rented this place. And later on we would find out that he would work in the morning as a tent maker. He would work with Aquila and Priscilla. He would work with people that were with him. And he was a tent maker by trade. But in the afternoon he would go to the school of Tyrannus and he would teach the disciples, and he would preach the gospel. And something strategic happened. I believe that strategy comes from the Lord. God created us in His image. He made us brilliant. He made us have the opportunity for brilliance and scientific discovery and all things that we do in our intellectual brain. God created that. And so in this moment, they all of a sudden this strategy erupts. And we find that by the time we've, we get to... Uh, verse 10 of chapter 19 of Acts, something significant has happened. Something powerful. Now I believe that God wants to do something powerful in your life and in my life and in this world today that is beyond our wildest imagination, yet the church is asleep 
in many places around America for sure, around this nation. And it's become easy just to go to church and try to be the church. And it is as if the enemy would rather us be asleep than be awake. Because there's no doubt if we were in India today and a Hindu priest set fire to our church, we would wake up. Well, amen. It's happening all over that great nation. There's a battle and a fight. We can wake up in the morning and put our coffee on and uh, get ready for church and come. And we find our way here. And everything's good. And for every person in this nation, no matter how they came to this nation, whether they were born here or somewhere else, we're in a place of peril at this time. Three hundred and thirty five million people in the United States of America. In two thousand fourteen, two thousand fourteen, three thousand about three thousand one hundred churches closed in the United States of America in that one year. 3,500 churches were started that year. Praise the Lord. So 400 more churches were started than were closed. In 2019, pre-COVID-19 pandemic closure of everything, 2019, not 2020, 4,500 churches were closed in the United States of America. 3,000 new churches were started. That's... Baptist, Pentecostal, you name it. So there was a net loss of 1,500 churches in one year. And everybody's bumping along. Yet, today the immorality in this nation is exceeding anything we could ever imagine or dream. The challenges of what it means to be a man or a woman. Everything that people are saying in their immorality is attacking the family, the home, the church, degrading women, marginalizing men, and yet we seem to be voiceless at many times. Don't let the fire go out. Don't let the fire go out. Paul the Apostle would walk into Ephesus and he would have this revival moment. But Ephesus was a dark place. It was a tough place. It was a dark city. There was a temple there. And whether you were speaking, uh, whether you were from the Greek construct or the Roman construct of life or culture, you're all, you would be speaking Greek and you would refer to that as either the temple Artemis or the temple Diana. And that temple was a temple where they would come and they would worship this goddess Diana that they would say in their mythology that the, the, the great statue of Diana, the great goddess, fell from, the, the, from Jupiter. And they would come and they would worship there and they would buy little trinkets and they would buy little idols as they went through the marketplace on the way in and out of that temple. There were temple prostitutes. There was all kinds of debauchery and immorality and things that were going on. And people would come to that temple and they were hoping for fertility, that they would have children in their life. And they would go into the courtyard of the temple and there was a tree there and it was called the tree of life. Imagine that. It's amazing how the enemy will mock God and try to create things or set things up that are similar to what God has designed and instructed and constructed, but the enemy will mock him and mock us and, and almost duplicate and replicate in order to deceive. And they would come and they would touch that tree and they would believe that if they would touch that tree, that they would divinely somehow from the goddess Diana receive some impartation that they would have a baby. 
And it was here where Paul was preaching in the city. It was a multicultural city. It was a multilingual city. It was a city where people from all over Asia would come and they would come and they would come worship this goddess. They would come do whatever they did in whatever way they did. And people were full of the demons that were there. They were full of immorality. They were full of all kinds of wonder and what's going on and why I exist. And they're spending their money on every trinket and idol they could and anything for their pleasure and anything for their life and here comes Paul the Apostle and he's full of Jesus Christ and full of the Holy Ghost and begins to preach the gospel and something happens in the city. Something transitions and transforms this city. The city is awakened by the power of God. You see, people start to find out that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. They receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They're baptized. They are, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And they begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And they're preaching the Gospel. And they're teaching the Gospel. And Paul, all of a sudden, he is laying hands on people. Demons are being cast out. Miracles are happening. People are being healed. So much so, there is an overwhelmingness and not any way for Paul to get to everybody and so they take pieces of his outer garment and they would take these anointed cloths and they would lay them in the bed of sick people they would put them on people and demons were being cast out wasn't the power of the cloth it was the power of God and they believed that something powerful was happening and people came from everywhere and they were born again and they would go all over Asia Minor and they would go out as missionaries and they would go to places maybe they never lived before maybe they never been before and they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and he turned the city upside down in Jesus name and there was a fire there was a power there was a glorious move of God in in Ephesus that affected all of Asia Minor. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, they got mad and angry and they, they started to fuss. And, and you know, over time, things erode and people, people get sleepy and they get tired of the battle. And something would happen later on where they didn't worship Diana anymore. Now they worship the emperor of Rome. And they set up an idol at the entryway to the marketplace. And they would go to this place and they would, as they went to the market and there was this idol there of the emperor and there was a place where you would throw incense in the fire and it would, it would, it, it, you know, kind of smoke would come up and it was an emperor worship process. You couldn't go into the marketplace unless you worshiped the emperor. So you can just imagine the process of the church. Well, you know, we've got to do this in order to have that. We can't be the church unless we do every legal thing that the, the government asks for. We can't use the language we want to use because it's offensive. We, we have to go this process because that's what the government said. Now this is not an anti-government sermon. I don't mean that. But here's the point. There comes a point in time where the church must wake up and awaken to prayer and to fasting and to understand that God will be God no matter what. You don't have to compromise every minute of every day and even to go into the market the church in Ephesus perhaps began to compromise to the point that all these years later God is saying I have this one thing against you you have left your first love go back get back go back to your first love go back to where you started go back to where you began go back and start preaching Jesus and teaching Jesus and living Jesus and walking Jesus and, and go back and stir up the fire of the Holy Spirit in you and believe that God has called you to do something great that you never dreamed, you never imagined, you never believed, you never understood but God has brought you here for such a time as this to shake a nation to shake a city, to shake the world, to be what He's called you to be and to stand up and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ Christ. I believe that God has appointed our time for now. 
Okay, another way to say that, he's appointed us now for this time. Paul the Apostle would leave that city, but he would spend a significant time in Ephesus during his ministry. The church of Ephesus would affect all of Asia Minor. And I believe today that God is putting churches and awakening them and stirring them up and there is a fire somewhere that will come. There's a lady I never had the opportunity to meet, but I stood at her graveside quite a few times. Her name was Maria Atkinson. She was a lady that was born in Mexico around 1929, I think, or no, even earlier than that. She was born again around 1929. And um, she would start preaching the gospel when she was born again. She had been in Mexico and had a terrible life, and she had walked the road. Back then, the, the borders weren't so treacherous, perhaps, as they are today. And she made her way to a place called Douglas, Arizona, and she would be there, and she married an, uh, an American guy, Anglo, white guy. That's how she got the name Atkinson. So this Mexican young lady became married to a gringo an Americano, a white guy, took on the name Atkinson. and She was diagnosed with cancer and she was dying. She was in the house and there were a couple of ladies that washed clothes and cleaned houses and they were at the house next door and they heard about her sickness, her illness. And these two ladies, and they were Latina, they were Mexican ladies, they came and said, can we, can we visit? And they began to pray for this woman. And she was healed. Now imagine that in those days, early days, right? She was healed. Miraculously, divinely healed. And she had a salvation experience at that moment. And she was laying in bed, got up, and in her salvation moment, she prayed and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and this lady, they say she was probably like this tall. But she was a powerhouse. Because when she got filled with the Holy Spirit, she began to preach in her city. And then she went to the next city next door and she preached and started a church. And then she walked back into Mexico, walked. And she would walk and she would get a ride and people would pick her up and she would go from town to town and she would preach the gospel by herself. And people were born again. And churches were planted. In this town and the next town and the next town and the next town and the next town. Wow. So I, we, Cheryl's been with me. We stood at her graveside, and on that graveside it says "Aquí no hay duda" in Spanish, and it, it literally means "no doubt here" or "here there is no doubt" on her tombstone. If you want to wonder where she's at. Here, there is no doubt. Absent from this body, present with the Lord. And she became known as La Madre de Mexico. The mother of Mexico. She is the mother, the, the church planner, the pioneer of the Church of God movement in Mexico. And perhaps much of the Pentecostal movement in Mexico. Little lady. Well, she was tough. I have a friend who his father was one of her disciples. He said he got up to preach one day and he thought he was something else. He's a young guy. He preached everything he could. He came off the pulpit. And he was very proud. And he said, how'd I do? And the story goes that she came and she stood on his feet. She's little. She stood on his feet and she put her finger right in his face and said, you need to go repent. You're full of pride. 
But my friend's father now is in his 90s, and my friend is pastoring a church now. So think, think about this. This mother in the faith, this mother, this Pentecostal woman, raised up leaders. One of them was this pastor. Then his son now is pastoring, and he leads a church of probably 2,000 people in San Antonio, Texas. And now his son is preaching the gospel. God, send your fire. Send your fire. Don't let your fire burn out. Don't let the worry and care of this world let your fire burn out. I think about marriages. You've got to stir up the fire in a marriage. You, you want to go back and do your first works again some days. Even when you don't want to, you need to. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. How do you keep the, the flame going in the marriage? You keep on going. You stir up the fire. You, you keep moving forward. The longevity of husband and wife. Somebody say amen. amen. How do you keep the fire burning in the family? We, we, we come back and we do things again that we get around a table and we love one another and we care about one another. And it's not just about children growing up and being successful and going to school and going and get an education and going into business. Oh yeah, Hi mom and dad, how are you doing? I'm over here now. I don't need your God anymore. I don't need your church anymore. No, it's not about that. It's about the family rekindling the fire and doing our first works again and saying, all right, God, we want you as Lord of our family. We want you as Lord of our marriage. We want you as Lord of our life. And we want you to know, God, you are Lord of this house and we will follow you. And not only will we follow you, we will go and tell others about you. And we believe the fire will spread and there will be a revival that will change a community, that will change a city, that will change an area because God is a transforming God. And no matter what you've been through and no matter what you're going through, and no matter where you are in this moment maybe there's a rockingness in a home maybe there's a, a challenge in a marriage maybe there's a challenge for a mother here today and you've been discouraged and frustrated and aggravated I want to encourage you today that God sees you He knows you He knows where you are and He hasn't given up on you and go and do your first works again and stir up the fire of God in your life there is a power God's ready to pour out His power He's ready to do something through the church through the church in the United States, through the church in the world. He wants to do something here at Eternal Life Church that will be dramatic and transforming and it will change a city in the name of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Oh, come on, give Him praise today. Say, Pastor Sean, you're just a little crazy and a little anxious. It's okay. Take a deep breath. It'll be all right. The Lord said to them, I have this one thing against you. I believe that God is ready to stir up a fire in me and in us. I think God's been waiting on us because we're so consumed with everything else that we do. I get it. I understand. I have bills come to my box. Mr. Bill comes to my mailbox and he brings his family sometimes. And I know we have to figure out how to, how to manage life and how do we grow business and what about this job or this position or this certificate or this credential. It's the world we live in. Jesus Christ said, he, you know, the, he lived a life that he would walk and he would transform people. And in, in the scriptures in the New Testament, be in the world but not of the world. And so it's the navigation point of understanding that no matter what happens in this world and in this life, if we don't do what God has called us to do, we have missed the mark and we have failed. And so today I want to encourage you, and I will not go forever and forever on this message. But I want to encourage you, every man here, I'm just going to start with the ladies first. 
Every mother here, pray that God would stir the fire in you. Don't let your fire burn out. Don't let your lamp be taken. Every man in here, God, stir the fire in me. God, stir your fire in me. I go to my first works again. I repent and I go to you and I say, Lord Jesus Christ, stir me up once again. Help me to focus on your word and your power and what you've called me to be. As a church, God, don't let our fire, your fire go out from here. Don't take your lamp away. God, give us this city. In Jesus' name. Just say these words with me. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, let us accomplish your work in this city. Give us this city in Jesus' name. We declare it. Hallelujah. 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 I ask everyone here just say these words with me Father awaken your calling in my life now I invite you to lift your hands all over the sanctuary Holy Spirit I pray today that you would fall in this place. Your fire. God, that there would be soul winning evangelists that come out of this day. <laughs> they may work in the science field, the medical field, the business world. Uh, they may be self employed, have their own entrepreneurial endeavor. But God, I pray that you would raise them up as evangelists. God, that you would stir a fire right now. Every young person here, every young person in uh, university and college and school, God, there's a fire burning in them. I pray today, God, you would fan the flame. You'd fan the flame of fire, Lord. And begin to speak deep into their heart right now in the name of Jesus. Fire of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that your power will be poured out. Fire. Fire. The presence of God. Father, I pray the stirring of calling in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, that you would stir up a fire in every young man. Every young lady, God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father, I pray your fire, your power. In the name of Hallelujah. Sarabakonda. Imamate. Shokotodobosotodabatarabate. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we pray today. God, I pray for every area of this city. Everywhere around it. God, we pray from Davis to Folsom. God, we pray all the way to... to uh, God, all the way around the city. All the way to Auburn. And Lord, uh, all the way. God, everywhere. In the heart of the city. In the edges of the city. God, bring your fire. Bring your fire, God. We pray that people will be born again. They'd be filled with your Holy Spirit. They would be healed. They'd be set free. They'd be called to preach the gospel. Father, today we pray for every person who will travel to India this summer. I pray an anointing on them, awakening. 
awakening, awakening. God, they maybe go home to eat the pine pineapple and drink the coconut. Maybe they they looking forward to some some cooking that reminds them of days gone by. But Father, I pray that as you send them, there would be revival that goes with them. The power of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that every young man and young lady that goes to India on summer, summer vacation, Father, there's awakening in them. Lord, I pray right now, God, as you would stir your gift within every young man, every young lady, stir up your gift, stir up your gift, stir up your gift. <laughs> Come on, church, just press in. Press in. Press in. Press in. Press in. Press. Just push a little harder. Push a little further. God, touch my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship in church. Worship in God, we praise you today. I ask the musicians to come now. Um, In 2018, there was a prophetic voice that went forward from God through a man named Pastor Nico in um, Jakarta, Indonesia. And the word that came forward was this, that there would be a third Pentecostal outpouring now. They would move from east to west, from Asia to the United States, and there is a revival coming. People, we see it every day on the news, the, the atrociousness, the wickedness, the evil. But for me in my life, I'm convinced that God's about to do something big. We see how the, the disciples, when we studied, went around the world. Thomas to India. All around the world, disciples went. They were martyred, they were slaughtered, they were hurt, crucified. Apostle John burned in oil. Eventually became the pastor of the church at Ephesus. All for the sake of the gospel. So first Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. On that day when they were all together in one accord. There was a sound like a rushing mighty wind blew into the upper room, into that rooftop place. Cloven tongues like us of fire sat upon each one of them. And they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. In 1906, there was a blind in one eye African American man in a day where they called Jim Crow laws he couldn't sit at the same counter as a white man it's terrible racism at its extreme and this man would make his way he was born in Louisiana to he was the son of former slaves and he would make his way to Indiana to Ohio and then down to Houston Texas and then over to Los Angeles California 
He began to preach about the Holy Spirit in one church. They locked him out. He went and got a room, or no, he, he was invited to share a room, or share an apartment with somebody from that church that locked him out. They began to have Bible studies in a, on a porch at a house on Bunny Bray Street in Los Angeles, California. And it was on that porch that William Seymour was baptized in the Holy Spirit, began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And this man, would, the, the yard would fill up, there was no room, and they found a place, an old storefront that used to be a, a feed store for animals. It used to be a barn and it used to be a church and they swept it out. It was empty except for the dirt and the whatever junk was left over. They took wooden shelves and they broke them up and whatever wood they could find and they built wooden benches and put them in that little building and right there at 312 Azusa Street William Seymour began to preach the gospel. Fire. And that fire in the 20th century spread all over the world. First century, all over the world. 21st, 20th century, all over the world. And we're praying today for a third Pentecost. A third Pentecost. I know there have been Pentecostal outpourings everywhere. In India, in England, in Ireland. In Sweden, all over the world, we can point to moments. We can historically <clears throat> chart these moments by historical, historical account. But we know that two times, Acts chapter 2 in 1906, those revivals went global. Amen? So we're not discounting anything. What we're saying is, let's pray for global revival. But global revival starts here, in me and in you. And we're going to have to do things differently because we know if you do the same thing you've always done, you'll get the same thing. Well, it has to be a shift. It has to be a shift. And the fact is, if we go out and we win the lost and we win young people and we win a new generation, they may not come in and dress. They may be, we need them to dress appropriately. Right? But they may not dress like a suit and tie. And guess what? I don't care. If they're born again and full of the Holy Spirit and on fire and they're going out and communicating Jesus, let the fire fall. Let the fire spread. Let it burn in me. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Father, we praise You today and we glorify Your holy name. And God, we ask You in this eternal life church, stir Your fire. Stir Your fire fire spreads and we pray the fire will spread in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray the name that is above every name Alpha and Omega known as the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley, the wheel within a wheel, the bright and morning star, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray your fire of a Holy Spirit to come. And God, that we would be filled with your holiness and your purity and your sanctification. Let your fire fall. Let's just worship Him one more time together. Come on, everybody. Give Him praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Oh, we can do better than that. Let's worship. Lift your hands just for a moment and worship Him. Worship Him. God, we praise You today. We glorify You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.